Hi guys, in this beginner's tutorial, we're going to be looking at keyframes and interpolation within Cinema 4D. Now, if you are new to 3D and new to 3D animation, or just new to Cinema 4D, then understanding animation within it can sometimes be a bit tricky. So hopefully in this tutorial, I'm going to go through how to keyframe and what sort of keyframes Cinema 4D makes and what they call interpolation. OK, so animating within Cinema 4D is relatively simple. OK, so I'm just going to create myself a cube. OK, and I'm going to just sort of dolly out a bit and I'm going to move it to the left hand side of my screen. OK, relatively simple. That's where I want it to start. OK, and then to keyframe, I simply press this keyframe button down here. It's big red record active objects. Now it gives you a nice little information box there that tells you that it will only record the position, scale, rotation and PLA of active objects. PLA is point level animation, but we won't be dealing with that today. So if I just press that keyframe button, OK, you can see in my little timeline here, we get a little blue box that shows that there is now a keyframe for this cube. If I was to move my timeline along and then move my box and now adjust my timeline again, it will ping back to its last known keyframe. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move that to the end of my animation and then dragging the red handle all the way along, I'm going to create another keyframe. Boom. And now press play. And you can see that my cube now animates from one side of the screen to the other. OK, I'm not a 3D animator for nothing. However, how it moves between one side and the other, or how it gets between one keyframe and another in that time period, can change quite dramatically. At the moment, this cube is starting off slowly, going at a decent speed, and then slows down as it gets towards the other end. This is called easing in and easing out. OK, it's what most animation programs will do automatically as it gives a more realistic movement when things are animating. OK, and obviously realism is what most of us are going for. So this helps us be able to, con you know, to sort of mimic that. But it isn't always the way we want stuff to move. OK, to do that, I need to control its interpolation. OK, now interpolation is the way it gets between one keyframe and another. Now, I'm not going to change my keyframes. So at frame zero, it will always be here on the left. And at frame 90, it will always be there on the right. But I do want to change how it gets there. To do that, I need to adjust my Cinema 4D layout. And up here, it says start up. So I'm just going to change it from that to animate. OK, and we get the new layout. OK, and down the bottom here, we have our cube. OK, we've got our little keyframe. Boom. OK, and keyframe both sides that let us know how it gets there. OK, if I wanted to, I could move those keyframes. OK, so say if I moved it to 30 and 60, it means that at the beginning of my animation, it will stay still and then move quite quickly between 30 and 60 frames to the other side. OK. That's not too bad, but it isn't what I want to do. OK, I want it to be there and be there at these particular times. OK, so at zero, it's definitely there. At 90, it's definitely there. But how it gets between the two, I want to change. OK, so I'm just going to make some room for myself. This keyframe mode here is what we refer to as um, keyframe or dope sheet. OK, so it shows the keyframes that are in my scene. Another way of looking at it is using this button here called F curve mode function curves. OK, so if I click F curve mode, I now have a graphical representation of the movement between one keyframe and another. So if I just open up my cube, you can see that currently being displayed are all of these bits of information because that's what was keyframed. So it's position in X, Y, and Z, it's scale in X, Y, and Z, and it's rotation um, in P, H, and B. So 
what we notice, what we're looking at here, effectively is a time height graph. So we have time across the top. You can see that the number of keyframes goes up along across that way. Okay. And we have a, well, a number on the left hand side. Now we've got height up and down, but that figure relates to whichever piece of information we have selected. So the X axis, which is the flat plane that moves from left to right. Okay. I have a figure here. So we can see that it starts, if I just hover over, that my cube starts at minus 592.427 centimetres along that direction and finishes at about 863558 centimetres there. Okay. And this is its graph between the two. So following what we know from mathematics and all of our GCSE and A-level maths lessons, um, as the keyframes tick by, you can see that between like these, there is very little difference. Okay. And here, however, okay, you can see that there seems to be a bigger change. If I go to say around 40 frames, it's at that point, all the way up to sort of 50 frames, you can see that there is a bigger difference, but that line is straighter. This is where it gets a more constant speed in the middle. So if I just move my way, through these frames, you can see the physical effect that that has on that cube. That it's not moving an awful lot until the middle, when the difference between one frame and another there and there is way bigger than between one frame and zero frames, where it moves a tiny fraction. Now, this line is the interpolation. This is how I can control how it gets between one and the other. And there's some examples of this here. Okay. If I was to set it to linear interpolation, okay, the line goes completely straight. This means that it is a constant speed. It goes the same amount of distance across each frame. So if I just press play, constantly, okay, like a robot, it just moves between one and the other. Okay. Step is another one that it has as automatic. And you can see that that gives me a very interesting graph here. So that it is flat all the way along, which means it doesn't move. It doesn't move right up until boop, frame 90. So if you wanted it to suddenly jump between one frame and another, okay, you could use step interpolation. Okay. But for the moment, I'm going to keep it on spline because that means I have access to these, the little black tangent handles that allow me to control the way this spline curves. So at the moment, it starts slowly, goes a speed and then slows down. What if I wanted it to start slowly, speed up and come to a grinding halt? OK, if I select the last keyframe, OK, I can access this tangent handle here. And if I was to bring it down, okay, so that you had the curvature, so it was very slow to start with. In fact, actually it dips below, okay, and I'll show you what that does in a minute. Okay, if I was to bring it above that line and press play, it's slow and then whoop, speeds up till it gets to the very end, you know, where it abruptly finishes, okay. Where its starting point was here at minus 592, if I was to bring that angle down further, okay, even though my keyframe starts at zero, okay, is at around say 600, over here it drops below, which means it will actually go backwards because it's getting further along the x-axis in that direction before it pings forward. Okay, so sometimes if your object is doing something very strange in animation and it's nipping in the opposite direction do you expect it, check your interpolation because you might find that this is what's going on. Okay, that the graph is nipping below the line you expect it to and therefore it's moving backwards. Okay, so if I just press play now, as before, it starts off slowly and nips its way to the end really fast.
Okay, what if I wanted it to go the other way? Now, I can simply adjust the tangent handles like I did before. So if I select the first keyframe, okay, and then I give myself that curve and go to the beginning of my animation, it will start fast, ping its way across and slowly grind to a halt. Okay, it's going so fast there that I can barely see it because the difference between that frame and that frame is quite large. And then it gets less and less and less and less and less until eventually the difference between those frames is so minimal you can barely see it. Okay, so if now if I press play, there we go. Okay, it's the adjustment of interpolation and things like that that you will find will give you the most realistic animations when you start to animating your stuff. Using Cinema 4D, own sort of interpolation is okay for the majority of things but using this getting that feeling of movement of sense of timing and speed and things like that is what's going to really bring out your ability of animating better okay so once again this was another quick tutorial on how to keyframe and how to adjust the interpolation of objects i hope it was useful and you've learned some stuff from it and i will catch you next time